Now the chart of accounts is going to be something that we're going to have to modify because the chart of accounts is going to have a whole lot of accounts it is the way the QuickBooks Online is currently set up. What we want to do now is look at these balances that are our beginning balances that we talked about last time, which we're going to say these are the balances at the end of the prior accounting system, 123122, the balance sheet accounts that I'd like to put in our accounting system as of 123122 so that we can start our new accounting system on January 1st, 2023. So I need to have at least these accounts into our chart of accounts. So the general rule for the chart of accounts as I add these accounts is if there's an account already here that is the same as the account that I want to be adding, then of course I'm going to use the account that is already here. If there is not, but there's a similar account, then I'm going to try to change the name possibly of the account to be appropriate and fit my needs instead of having two accounts that are very similar in name which will confuse the data input and then as after we do like two months of data input with that strategy then i would go back into the chart of accounts and look at those accounts that i'm not using and then try to clean up my chart of accounts making those accounts inactive so at this point in time we want to look at these accounts and add them into our system and and then change the chart of accounts as needed so right now we're going to be looking soon at the inventory assets which have an added complexity of inventory items and we're going to kind of lead into that by first looking at service items in other words we'll pick some of the harder accounts first that have these sub ledgers that become more of a problem that is with inventory if you're tracking inventory within the system that is also going to be the same with the accounts receivable which means you have to have customers that are kind of attached to it with a sub ledger and the accounts payable. So we're going to start leading into kind of the inventory that we're going to be adding into the system. And the way we add the inventory items into the system is we have to add the actual inventory items. If we're using a perpetual inventory system within QuickBooks and the cost of those items, which the system can then make into and determine the ending balance of this 2,896, the other side going to the equity.